I would say very basically it's a process that lets us um, deliver usable chunks of code um, with regular cadence. There's two big ways of you know following an agile process. One of them is called a sprint, where you set aside um, a set amount of time, usually anywhere from one to three weeks, um, where you decide on certain tasks or projects to get done within that period of time. In Scrum, we kind of dedicate and say, this is what we're going to be doing in the sprint, and we try to finish those things in the sprint. Uh, how we think about it is like Lego blocks. So you have like a base, right? Um, the base is something that are the base requirements that are needed for a software system to work. Then you have these building blocks that you build on top. Like, you know, I want a penthouse or whatever else that you want to do, a fancy penthouse. Lego structure. <laughs> I want a penthouse. Usually, like with, with the Scrum process, we can find that it, it's not like waterfall where we realize that at the very end, after we've done all this work, all this planning, um, we'll usually know like within, you know, a couple stories if we need to change our approach. So it makes us more agile. So when you're putting those building blocks together, you realize, you know what, maybe that penthouse needs to be a swimming pool. Do, can I do that? In Waterfall, that's something that you would not necessarily be able to do unless you've already finished the whole structure. In Agile, because you're always grooming, you're doing things like backlog and stuff like that, you can actually move those things around and say, you know what, I don't want that penthouse anymore. I want a swimming pool. The Scrum process seems like it lets us focus more on what's right in front of us. Mm -hmm. It makes it easier for us to say, you know, here's what we did, client, here's what we're gonna do. And if anything needs to change, it just makes it a lot easier to change without having to take a bunch of steps back that we would have to do with other models. It's a lot easier to see uh, our progress on a project. So I mean, we know right away if something's gonna break the bank or not, or. Yeah. Um, we know if it's going to fail, like, real quick, like, yeah. if your QA is going terribly. Yeah. <laughs> Finding a bug at the end of, um, you know, a month's worth of work is terrible. If we can find it within a day's worth of work, that's awesome. Uh, traditionally, we, our scrums should be two weeks, but our client changes, um, has changing priorities, uh, all the time, so we uh, reduced our um, sprints to one week, and that's it's just been so much easier for us to deliver what the client wants um, and actually be able to commit to it at the beginning of the week. Our Scrum is notorious for having latecomers, so we've implemented a system of donuts or bagels. Uh, so when someone is late, they have to, after three strikes, they have to bring in donuts or bagels for everyone. The scrum after that that I go to, I don't, I don't think I've ever been late to that. No, there's no need for bagels there. Yeah, because you have to come for the scrum. <laughs> scrum <going. laughs> yes. What um, makes your scrum team successful? <laughs> <laughs> Me also. <laughs> <laughs> Both of us. <laughs> but, but I mean, if you were to take a step back, right? So what makes the Scrum team successful, or rather, it's, it's the team itself. The Scrum is, is mm -hmm. essentially a process, it's a framework, but if the team's not responsible, if they aren't receptive to the idea, then it's not going to work, regardless of whatever you call it. The team, yeah, everybody works together, everybody swarms to the areas that we need to to get stuff done, and we treat a commitment as a commitment and try really hard to make it happen. There's usually a go team. Mm. There's a go team. <laughs> like that is the most efficient scrum we've had ever.